Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Unify Network Application 9.5, which brings again, a ton of new great features, including channel AI and an improved port manager, plus a couple other things that I think people are gonna like. So let's get started. Before we get started, 9.5 is still in release candidate as the time of this video. So if you wanna upgrade, you need to make sure that you're in release candidate. How we go and do that, we press on our settings wheel and then we click over on our control plane. You're gonna see here that we have my UDM Pro Max and then we have the network. Clicking on the UDM Pro Max or on the network, it's gonna bring up this side pane. And from here, we could switch over from when it's on official channel or if it's on release candidate or early access. So you'll wanna go over to release candidate. The first new improvement that we're gonna take a look at is the channel AI and your access points need to be at 8.2.3 or 6.7.29 or higher. And where we go to find that, we're gonna to wanna to click over on our radios. Clicking over on the radios, we're now on our air view. We could click on our radios. We could go to the environment and then we have this new section, which is our channel AI. This will show you all the access points within your Unify network application. I only have two U7 Pro walls currently in this network application. Under our channel AI, we could see the 2.4, the five and the six gigahertz. And clicking the optimize button, it says using neighboring AP signals to optimize channel distribution. Designed for controlled, very high density deployments where external interference is limited. So you could click that and right now we're on the 2.4. So let's go ahead and try that. On my top U7 Pro wall, we're on channel 11 and on the bottom one, we're on six. You could also see our signal strength and our TX retries and the clients connected. So we're gonna press optimize to see if it switches channels. The channel optimization has been completed and you could see that those APs are still on 11 and six. Let's move over to the five gigahertz and try the same thing. The top AP is on 36 and the bottom is on 112. And the optimization is successful and you could see that those APs stayed on the same channel as well. And now we can look at our six gigahertz and I don't think I even have six gigahertz enabled right now or a Wi-Fi SSID that has it. That's why you're not seeing any channels in use. There's a couple more things that we could do on the left hand side. If we go over and expand our channel plan, we could exclude different channels. So on the 2.4, if we don't ever want it to go on channel four, we could click that and it would exclude it. Also, we have these different statistics. By default, it's gonna show us our 24 hours, our TX retry, our average signal, and our clients. But if we just wanna see the clients, we just need to check that off and that's all it will show. Now I haven't tested this extensively to see if it actually works really well or really properly and I only have two APs in my environment, but I will test it out in an environment that is high dense and I will let you know how that goes. Next up is the improved port manager and AI anomalies. You could see that we have anomaly here and most of these are zero and that's what we wanna see. Zero means that we have a good connection, but if we have a poor connection, we're gonna see that. So let's scroll down. I did mimic a poor connection. So if we go down to my aggregation, we could see that this has a 70 anomaly. So if we click over on this port and then we go over to statistics, it's gonna show us a couple things here. Our status, our connection, the native VLAN, the speed, and then it will show us what the anomaly is doing. So 24 hour AI anomaly score is 70 and cable and power is fine, but we have a network loop in storm control. So the issue that's being caused right now is excessive STP BP DUs that are detected because I did mimic a spanning tree. So I just grabbed the cable and I plugged them into two ports on the exact same switch. Other than that, I don't have any other anomalies. All my ports are good. The type of things that you'll see with the 24 hour AI anomalies is as followed. We're gonna see cable and powers. We're gonna see network loops and storm control, broadcast and discovery, as well as traffic path health. On the side panel, we're gonna see other details. So port statistic at a glance, activity logs for anomaly events and admin changes, and Mac table displaying current connected devices. So this is gonna be great if you have a massive network and you're having cable issues. We're gonna be able to really drill into each port to see what's going on. With the port anomaly, we could also set up additional alarms. So I'm over in alarm manager and we're gonna create a new alarm. Now under the monitoring, we now see that we have port anomalies. And if we click on that, we could select which devices that we want it for. Do we want it for all of our unified devices or do we want it just for specific devices? We could also do our action. 
So who is it going to notify? Is it going to go all admins, one admin, and we could ignore repeat alarms? With this, we could also push it out to webhooks. So built in, we have Slack, we have ServiceNow, and then we have a custom webhook. And we also have our URL and then we have an ad action. This is really going to be good for if you need to monitor client sites. And if you see any port anomalies, it could just push out to your Slack for you. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is our default security posture. And that's found under the network setting. And it says this will apply to all segments of the network, including zones, VLANs and interfaces, unless specifically overridden by custom rules. So usually when we had a ubiquity firewall right out of the box, it would allow all traffic, but now we could click on block all. So I'll go ahead and I'll click it. Change default security postures, new VLANs, ethernet port profiles and devices will be isolated by default. Existing ones will stay unchanged. So if you're setting up a new network and you want it to block all and then put allow rules in, you can now finally do that. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at for this update is under one of my Wi-Fi SSIDs and they have added back multicast and MDNS management. Controls how multicast DNS services announcements and discovery traffic are handled across VLANs and Wi-Fi networks. By default, this is gonna turn it on auto and it enables the MDNS proxy caching for all VLANs with no service filtering applied. We could also do custom and then we could create new if we wanted. I think that network application 9.5 is a great new update. We have the channel AI and we have the improved port manager, which is gonna tell us anomalies or AI anomalies with what is happening with our ports. Being able to do our security to block all right out of the box is gonna make a lot of people happy as well. Let me know what you think about this new update in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.